Hello and welcome to Court TV News at 4. I am Olaju Mokyo Latanji. The Fadji government has issued a 5th September 15 deadline for all ministries, departments and agencies to comply with the Treasury's single count directive. President Mohamed Buhari set dates in a communication to all MDAs. The presidency said in a statement issued by the vice president's spokesman, Lao Lua Kwande, that all government revenues are expected to go into a TSA domicile at the central bank. It pointed out that several sanctions await any public official who fails to comply with the deadline. The directive that was first introduced in early August applies to fully funded ministries, departments, agencies and foreign missions, as well as the partially funded ones, like teaching hospitals, medical centers and federal tertiary institutions, others are agencies like the Central Bank, Customs, FAN and NMPC, among others. In Plato states, just like several other states in the country, missed reactions have triggered the assessment of the All Progressives Congress government in the state under the leadership of Governor Simeon Lalung. First 100 days in office, our correspondents sampled opinions of some eminent Plato citizens. The report. 100 days after the inauguration of a new administration in Plato state, mixed reactions have triggered the performance of the new governor. While some say he deserves more time, others say the new administration has nothing to show in terms of achievement. Well, uh, the first hundred days of ABC on the plateau, uh, I cannot tentatively say a word about their first hundred days in office, but I know that part of the things they did on the plateau is the illegal dissolution of the local government council because there's a Supreme Court judgment. So far, so good. I, don't, I, I can't tell you anything about it because I've not seen anything happening. I've not seen anything happening. So I don't want to lie. I don't want to tell you. The order. Some legal practitioners are of the opinion that lack of proper constitution of the state executive council due to the delay in appointing commissioners has affected the success of the administration. Um, Within the next 100 days, there are quite a number of things that can be done. Number one, we must address ourselves to the, to the security situation in the state. Because as it is, there is no day that passes by that you will not hear of one conflict or the other which will lead to the killing of several people. It's a major area that the government is doing. You see, there are certain information that may not be an opportunity to, uh, to run a state. One should be able to be prepared right from the onset. And therefore, 100 days without the ESCO in place, to me, is not too good. Though we also understand... It's over 100 days after the inauguration of this administration. Residents of the state are of the opinion that the time is now to hold the leaders accountable for their failed promises. The Kaduna State Government has delivered 24 billion iron for 100 accounts operated by the previous government. Governor Nasio El Rufai disclosed this at a town hall meeting in Kafanchan in southern Kaduna. He also indicated that it would not relent until the government knows the actual number of civil servants in the state. The governor was represented at the meeting by his deputy, Bala Bantex. The promise to deliver the dividends of democracy has always been the focal point for politicians who are other masses of the electorate to be elected into power. In a case state, for instance, both the government and power and all the interested parties are jointly serving the people, while Governor Delefai should champion stomach infrastructure. An APC chieftain is also reaching out to commercial motorcyclists and what is clearly seen as built up to the 2018 governorship election. Rashid Rashid monitors how the strategies play out in the minds of its people and follows in this report. This is no race for a trophy, but for getting two liters of freely distributed PMS, an act that is fast becoming a trend in Ekiti state politics as the People's Democratic Party and the All Progressives Congress outwit each other in the scheming of winning the heart of the electorate, while the PDP-led government by Odele Fayoshi interacts with the downtrodden with the stomach infrastructure policy, the APC are not left behind with the distribution of two liters of fuel to commercial motorcyclists on a monthly basis sponsored by former Speaker of the State. Femi Bamishila, 
However, Bafem says it's simply a service to humanity and not a political game. The process that we're doing is trying to aid the system. We have a problem in the Kitty State that we all know, which is the problem that we don't have too much money here. And so everybody who is well-meaning to the people of Ekiti State, who can give out, should be able to do that for the people of Ekiti. To the commercial motorcyclists, weighing between five years stomach infrastructure and two liters of PMS was a difficult case to judge. In time of new developments, we can see stomach infrastructure is there. That is all Ekiti people need. While the Ekiti State government gets set to demolish and rebuild the burnt Erekesa market, the APC has accused the government of neglecting those who lost their goods to the inferno by not providing relief materials. Uh, next week, we'll you, I will follow the letter myself to Abuja. Relief material. With a war of words not abating and now matched with actions, political observers say the race to Ukiyoba in 2018 is clearly not a child's play. Rashid Rashid, or TV News. The National Council for Arts and Culture has concluded an arrangement to showcase local culture and customs as part of activities lined up for its 40th anniversary later this month. Director General of the Council, Dayo Keshi, says at a news conference in Abuja that events would be tailored towards exposing the potentials of the sector and its role in national development. She added that the council also hopes to use the platform to draw attention of the private sector to the economic opportunities in arts and culture. The theme for the week-long celebration is the inevitable role of culture in national development and economic diversification. That NCSC as a strategic organ of government has the latent capacity for contributing a lot to Nigeria's economic development, especially with respect to tourism arrivals and in building a strong rural economy that will benefit Nigerian women and youth, thereby giving them a sense of inclusion. We are unequivocal that there is the need for us as a nation to face squarely the challenge of preserving, protecting, and promoting our culture against the onslaught of globalization. This is because our culture represents who we are and the values that we share. The Federal Road Safety Corps and other stakeholders have called for the creation of separate routes for trailers to curb and season attacks involving articulated vehicles and other road users. This follows the accident on Wednesday in Lagos where a container in a 45th trailer fell off the Jolagwa Bridge onto the road below, killing three people as the fallen container crushed two private vehicles that were in motion. The stakeholders also urged the government to restrict the movement of articulated vehicles to midnight and put in place mechanisms to ensure street compliance. The President's Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Remy Bello, who recalled that the government had tried to restrict heavy-duty vehicles from moving during the day, said articulated vehicles should only be allowed to move at night. He also recalled that in the past, overhead barriers were erected at the bridge entry point to prevent those vehicles from passing through bridges. This is your call TV News at 4. We'll take a break now. We'll be back on our stories. Please stay with us. What the people are saying. You don't run a big economy with generator. They need to do more in terms of energy and power. Many things to do for this Nigeria. About lights, water, and new TT. For Nigerians that are not gullible, we know that good laws are done nothing good for this country. We already won the election eh? convincingly. They talk to our husband that you should keep promise so, about what you said. Oh. Because people are watching you, you know, another election is coming. Because so, some people were strong for good land. We'll be strong, man. You don't die. This nation is moving forward. The best is going to take place. The people giving voice to the voiceless. 
Thank you for joining us again. For more on the news and other programs, please visit our Facebook page at www.thefacebook.com forward slash Call TV News. You can follow us on Twitter at Call TV News and G. Also, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Call TV Live Space the News. The Lagos State Government has restated its determination to ensure strict enforcement of the Road Traffic Law 2012, restricting trailers and long vehicles from plying the metropolis between the hours of 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Transportation, Olushe Uwenu, who spoke to journalists on the backdrop of the fatal accident involving a container laden tra trailer on September 2nd, said the trailer contravened Section 2, Subsection 1 and 2 of the traffic law. When it states that the state government will henceforth go tough on any trailer and long vehicle that contravenes the law, a such vehicle will be impounded and made to pay the stipulated fine accordingly. Meanwhile, leaders of various transport unions and associations in the state at the weekend rose from the meeting with officials of the state government with a resolve to support the new directive introduced in apprehending traffic offenders. When at the meeting clarified the state government's position on the new directive, saying the last small features have not been withdrawn from performing their statutory responsibilities on the road. The Lagos State Government says it will fully enforce the provisions of the law restricting street trading in the metropolis. Chairman of the State Task Force on Environmental and Other Special Offenses, Olubukola Abe, a superintendent of police who gave the commitments while speaking to journalists in our Laosai Keja, said the new drive is to reduce the traffic congestion on the road, often caused by the activities of street trading. He affirms the Section 1 of the Street Trading and Illegal Market Prohibition Law of 2003 restricts street trading and hawking in the metropolis. Section 7 and 8 of the same law gives jurisdiction and power to the special court to order the seizure and public auction of items impounded for street tradition. He said his men are prepared to step up enforcement of the relevant sections of the law, urging motorists not to encourage their activities by patronizing them. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation has commenced the process of recovering over $7 billion in over-deducted tax benefits from joint venture partners on major capital projects. It was learned on Sunday that the corporation had also engaged an international accounting firm to ascertain the exact amounts due to government on the strategic alliance contract entered by a Nigerian petroleum development company where up to $2.46 billion of government's money would be recovered. In a report submitted to President Muhammad Buhari by its new management, detailing the corporation's successes so far, the group managing director of the NNPC, Ibe Kachiko, stated that the firm had commenced its performance measurements and benchmarking. He added that the corporation has started what it described as value for money review of the NNPC and the JV companies covering the period of 2008 to 2013. The senior special assistant to President Buhari and media and publicity, Gal Rochelle, in a statement on Sunday, disclosed that the NNPC report indicated that the new measures might lead to a further cost recovery for the firm. The managing director of Nigeria's Sovereign Investment Authority, Uche Oji, has said the agency will attract more funding for investment in infrastructure projects. Oji, who said this during an interactive session with journalists in Abuja, explained that the NSIA would achieve this through the setting up of a special faculty that would aid the investment of pension funds' assets in infrastructure. As of July this year, the country's pension fund assets stood at 4.9 trillion naira. Oji said the facility, which is to be called the Nigeria Credit Enhancement Facility, was being worked on in collaboration with Garant Co., a company from the United Kingdom. He said the facility would assist the country in bridging the current infrastructure gap, which according to the federal government stood at 2.2 trillion naira annually. On progress so far made on the second Niger Bridge, he said the NSIA was still committed to actualizing the project. Already, he said the agency had invested a sum of $2.21 million in the project, 
is set out of the 44-kilometer bridge, which would be constructed over a four-year period. The NSRA would only be responsible for the financing of 11 kilometers. The project, according to him, is structured as a public-private partnership that will be constructed and operated on design, build, finance, operate, and transfer basis. Saleh Dunomo, Managing Director of Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria, has said the new terminus at Nigeria's major international airports in Lagos, Abuja, Kano, Port Harcourt and Enugu will be completed in 2016. According to him, when they are completed, Nigeria will become the hub of aviation in Africa. He said Alden that the airports would improve passenger comfort, increase capacity and improve facilitation. Speaking in Panama during the Arnold General Assembly Conference, an exhibition of the Airports Council International, Genoma said the continuation of this terminus will stimulate robust traffic growth in passenger and cargo traffic. He said though the 7.2% increase for passenger traffic from the means countries, Mexico, Indonesia, Niger and Turkey, as contained in the 2014 ACI World Airport Traffic Report, was commendable. This figure would experience a steady rise. The new international terminals have been constructed with a $500 million loan secured from Chinese bank under Stella Odor as aviation minister about two years ago. We'll take another break and we'll come back with stories from outside Nigeria. Please stay with us. What the people are saying. You don't run a big economy with generator. They need to do more in terms of energy and power. Many things to do for this Nigeria. About lights, water, and new TT. For Nigerians that are not gullible, we know that good laws are done nothing good for this country. We already won the election eh? convincingly. They talk to our husband that you should keep promise oh, about what you said. Oh. And because people are watching you, you know, another election is coming. Because so, some people were strong for the land. We'll be strong, man. You don't die. This nation is moving forward. The best is going to take place. The people giving voice to the voiceless. You can now watch Core TV News Live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.coretvnews.com. Click on live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. On Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. For stories outside Nigeria, Germany and France were reportedly taking 50,000 plus additional refugees as Hungarian PM Orban dismisses quarter plan. France's president, Francis Hollande, has announced this country will take in 24,000 refugees over the next two years. While it is understood, Germany will take 31,000 additional people under a European plan which is strongly opposed by Hungary. The figure revealed by the French leader on Monday represents France's share of a European proposal to relocate 120,000 refugees. The European Commission, President Jean Clark Juncker, is due to unveil new proposals on Wednesday. EU officials have said Juncker will propose adding 120,000 people to be relocated on top of a group of 40,000 the Commission previously proposed relocating. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban told the Guardian of Foreign Ambassadors on Monday, however, that the plan could not be discussed while the EU's Ulster borders were not secured. Qatar Armed Forces soldiers, backed by 200 armored vehicles and 30 Poche helicopters, head to Yemen's Marib province. More Qatari troops are reportedly heading into Yemen with the aim of securing the job government around 1,000 soldiers from Qatar's armed forces have been deployed to Yemen as part of the Arab coalition's fight against Uta rebels. The troops are now reportedly heading to Yemen's Marib province to join the Saudi-led coalition already fighting in the area. 
Jimmy Morales leads the most ballot counted for two candidates running neck and neck for second spot in one of. For more than 80 percent of votes counted, TV comedian Jimmy Morales led with 25.8 percent of votes. Guatemala appears set for a presidential runoff in October after earning results from Sunday polls showed no candidates receiving close to the 50 percent of ballots needed to win the election outright. For just over 81.5 percent of votes counted by early Monday morning local time, TV comedian Jimmy Morales led with 25.8 percent of votes, followed by veteran politician and businessman Manuel Bardison with about 18.6 percent of votes cast. Bardison is followed closely by former First Lady Sandra Torres, who has 17.9 percent. Elector officials said early signs showed the turnout was high, about 80 percent, though official confirmation was not expected until later. The Associated Press News Agency reported a runoff between the two top candidates will take place in late October. And in the wider sport. Supergirls midfielder Obiara Wankor says the three-time African champions are not intimidated by the prospect of facing Egypt on March Day 3 of 2017 African Cup of Nations qualifying March. The Egyptians are the form side in Group G, having amassed maximum point for the first two games. A 5-1 win for the first on Sunday underlined the North Africans' intent. But Obira says players of the Super Girls are not losing sleep over the prospect of facing the Group G leaders. The 24-year-old then took the time to discuss Nigeria's Zerzor Joy in Dar es Salaam against Tanzania on March Day 2, as well as new coach Sandy Lins's impact on the team. Nigeria is currently in second place in Group G of Afghan qualifying, with four points from two matches, two points adrift of the leaders, Egypt. Iceland sealed their place at the major tournament for the first time as they secured the points they needed in the Euro 2016 qualifier against Kazakhstan. Iceland and such Republic both progressed from Group A, with Netherlands now unable to advance automatically. Kata Saren Gunnarsson, the island captain, who had dismissed the lead on Sunday, says it's unbelievable and shocking. The island nation is the smallest to qualify for Euros, with an estimated population of just 317,000. Before the match, manager Lars Lagerberg said qualifying would mean more than reaching eight successive finals with its native Sweden, who he managed for nine years. Ireland has moved up 100 places in the FIFA rankings since Lagerbeck took charge in 2011 and now sits in 23rd position above the likes of France, Ukraine and Russia. Belgium narrowly defeated Cyprus in Okoshi to keep Group B leaders Wales waiting to qualify for Euro 2016. The Welsh drew 0 0 with Israel in Cardiff and would have qualified if Belgium had failed to win. But Chelsea forward Eden Hazard hit the na Hit the winner four minutes from time, striking and drives Mustard's cutback. Earlier, midfielder Kevin De Bruyne had struck straight at the goalkeeper, went through on goal, and Marius Nicola had a low effort save by Thibaut Cautious. In the same group, Bosnia Herzegovina beat Hadrona 3 0 to move up to fourth, two points behind Israel. Wales need a draw away at Bosnia Herzegovina or at home against Andorra to secure qualification. Or Belgium will also have a chance to qualify automatically when they face Andorra and Israel in the last two matches. Second place to Belgium at one point behind Wales, with the top two sides securing automatic qualification for the tournament in France next summer. And finally, Serena Williams saw off a significant threat to a Grand Slam hopes of victory overnight in Sid Madison Keys at the U.S. Open. Williams, the world number one, beat a fellow American 6-3, 6-3 to set up a quarter-final against the sister Venus. Serena took the three is now three wins from competing the first Kalena Grand Slam since Steffi Graf in 1988. Novak Djokovic overcame an informed Roberto Bautista August. Subduing the Spanish 23rd seed, 6-3, 4-6, 6-4, and 6-3.
The top seed, who has already won the Australian Open on Wimbledon this season, will face Botisto August's compatriot, Felicino Lopez, in the last round. Men's defending champion Marin Silic and Knighton seed Joel Frensonga both won and will meet in the last eight. Britain's Andy Murray and John Hunnar Kunta will take hugely different levels of experience into their U.S. Open fourth round matches on Monday. Murray will play South Africa's fourth seed Calvin Anderson in Lloyd's Angle Stadium at around 20 the squad had been to at least the quarterfinals of the last 18 Grand Slams, but Conte had never been past round two before this week. She plays Petra Vichova in the first night match on Tuesday. Five-time champion Roger Federer will play American number one John Eastner in the second night session match in Arthur Ashe Stadium. She says, and I quote, have been on an excellent run lately. Ray says of Conte, she's very close to being the number one in Britain. Well, that's it to wrap on Call TV News at 4. Many thanks for watching. I'm Elijah McKinney, Manchester.